just looks so cool. It's like, somewhere in there is my protein. So yesterday I told you about Native Page in which we separate protein complexes together um, through a gel. So it's like SDS Page in that you're using a gel to separate um, proteins by their size using electricity um, to get them to move through the gel. Um, but unlike SDS Page, you're not unfolding the proteins. Um, and so this keeps complexes together so you can see if proteins are like forming multimers and that sort of thing. But the SCS, it doesn't just like unfold the proteins, it also gives them a negative charge. And so if your protein doesn't have a negative charge, um, at least at the pH that's used in the, the buffer, then your protein is not going to have that urge to go, it's not going to have that um, pull to go through the gel, and so it won't. So if you have one, one of these like basic proteins, which is positively charged, what you can do is you can use this technique called blue native page, in which you use um, Comassi blue dye. Um, and this dye is going to like gently bind to the proteins and the complexes, so it's not gonna break them up, but it will give them a negative charge. And this is going to let them travel through the gel. Um, and so yesterday I told you about the theory and today I want to show you how I actually did it because it's really, it's blue and it's kind of cool looking. Um, and really that's, well, the, the, the science is cool too, but it, it was really pretty and I had never seen something like that. Um, and so I thought I'd share. So my results weren't uh, very informative, but I'm still glad I did it because it's one of those things that I've always wanted to know how to do and now I do. You never know until you try. So I'm using like a precast 4 to 20 percent gel. It's my 1x tristlysine buffer. I'm going to fill this. So at this point, this is just without the dye, no dye yet. Now I am going to load my samples. So you have to use like a special ladder. The normal ladders are like for SBS page. Um, so they're like denatured and stuff. Okay, so now I'm gonna load my samples so you can see they're clear because they don't have the SDS um, dye. Um, they do have 20% final glycerol so that they won't like float out of the wells. Thankfully these pre-runs have been numbered because you can't see very well without the dye. gonna fill the empty lanes with like a 20% um, so that it doesn't run wonky. I only have eight samples and so if you have like uneven, you have like a bunch of empty wells, that's gonna And you can't 
it's hard to like see if anything's happening because you can't really see the bubbles rising when there's a bunch of blue. But it looks like it's running and now I am going to um, let it run for like 20 minutes or so until the dye and stuff like the proteins everything's entered the gel. Um, and then I'm going to stop it, remove the inner buffer, so remove the blue stuff, and put in just like fresh um, non dyed having stuff. And that's going to prevent it from getting like over dyed and um, causing problems and stuff. And right now, I'm going to get out of the cold room. into the outer chamber. Um, that's why that blue, it's not, it shouldn't look blue, like, because you don't want it to, things to be leaking, and you don't need the blue on the outer, because awesome so the reason why it's kind of like you have that band is because you start it with uh, the dye and then you replace it with like fresh um, undyed buffer so you don't like over dye it and stuff um, and so I'm running it um, and my protein somewhere in there hopefully I will be able to see it gonna increase the voltage now I have a meeting to go to. Time to turn it off. Yeah, so after you can do a bunch of different things. Um, so I just stained mine to look at it. Um, and I lazy stained it. Um, so basically when, because you have like the dye in the gel, even if though you replace the buffer part way through, you're still gonna have like a dark dye band. Um, and so thankfully, like that's below the proteins I was interested in. Um, so I didn't really worry about de-staining it before I just stuck in some quick stain. Um, if you have like a ton of protein in there, you might be able to see some bands without even staining because when you're staining it, you're adding Kumasi. Um, but so if you wanted to like really sensitive stain, you can even like silver stain. Um, but for those things, you're gonna wanna like de-stain the gel first. Um, and so there's like de-stain solutions and stuff for like acetic acid and stuff, and then you can restain it. Um, and that's also going to like, when you stain it that way, like you de-stain and stuff, you're like fixing the gel, the proteins in place so that they like stay, um, like they precipitate in place. And so they're not gonna like diffuse out of the gel. Um, but if you are going to do something further, like you're going to take the bands out and like do something or you're going to do a second dimension page or whatever, there's different things that you're going to do um, and so you're not going to like want to fix them in place. Um, but basically look at the protocols if you want to know more about the various things you could do. Um, like a second dimension page, which I talked about yesterday, where you kind of like cut that band out, you soak it in some SDS and denaturing reagent to denature the proteins, but they're stuck in place in the gel. And then you kind of take that band and then you like turn it on its side and run it through SDS page. And so you're separating the components of the complex. Um, they'll be in the same column. Um, and you can also do things like a Western blot. So transfer it out of the gel and onto a membrane and then prove it for specific um, proteins. But for that, you need to know what proteins you're looking for. You can also like just send the, like take the bands and give them to a mass spectrometer person and max spectrometrist um, and ask them to identify the protein spilled like um, take them the sample and then they can like identify the peptides in the protein um, based on like the sequence um, so that's like 
an unbiased approach so you don't have to know what you're looking for and it'll say, oh, this is what it is.